your views. Our interviews on Spectrum Radio One FM ninety. Hello, a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio One. I'm your host Edmond Chizetu. On Spectrum tonight, should MPs return money given for the marriage and divorce bill consultations? The ninth Parliament has been revered as pro people, and because of this, it has enjoyed a lot of praise and recognition. This has been largely because of the tough stance MPs and the leadership, of the, the leadership of the House have taken in dealing with the craft and holding the executive to account. Parliament's decisions and the have also resonated with the views of the public. This picture is rapidly changing following heavy criticism on the way the House has handled the marriage and divorce bill. The Speaker of Parliament was forced to send MPs on recess for two weeks to consult on the bill before finally shelving it for three months. MPs started demanding for facilitation to carry out consultations, followed by intense lobbying by the NRM caucus, prompting a directive by the President that some 1.9 billion shillings be released by the Treasury so each can get 5 billion shillings for the purpose. Two legislators, Mohammed bin Sereko and William Zogu, returned 10 million to the accountant at Parliament. They advised colleagues to return this money, saying it is needed by teachers and medical workers more. Now, other MPs are under pressure to return this same money. Now, some Ugandans think that there was no need to spend money on consultations, since for the last so many years, relevant views have been gathered and articulated without this kind of money. So, now we ask should all the MPs return the money given to consult on the marriage and divorce bill? Also, why are MPs asking for facilitation on this particular bill and what does it mean to the taxpayer should other controversial matters arise in Parliament? Our guest tonight, Ms. Rita Achiro, Executive Director of the Uganda Women's Network. You're most welcome, Rita. Thank you, Edmund. Good evening, listeners and our viewers. We're also joined by Honorable Mwanga Chibumbi, with Tambala County MP from the Democratic Party. You're most welcome, Honorable Chibumbi. Good evening. We expect to be joined by Honorable Betty Olivia, President of the Ghana Federal Alliance, and Honorable Noila Oketa, Padre of District Woman MP from the NRM Party. Rita, why would an MP, Honorable Chief, why would you want to return this money? Um, as, as, as you've said, uh, there is a history to this money. This money uh, is not does not come out of the normal channels of Parliament. Uh, it's not on the normal schedules of payment of Parliament. This money's history is that NRM peace meet the President in an NRM caucus. They tell the President that you are sending us for consultation, but we lack facilitation. So that's the beginning point. How are MPs facilitated? We are given two kinds of, of salaries or emoluments. I'm given a basic salary mm -hmm. of virtually 1.5 million per month. Which is the only thing they tax? Which is the only thing they tax? It's 2.5, then they tax and you remain with 1.5. Mm -hmm. The rest are emoluments. Emoluments are clearly divided. You are given mileage. Okay? Marriage is the culture, the, the farthest end of your constituency, and they give you a return journey to and from for two days in a month. And they calculate that and they compound it and they give it to you per month. They give you what they call constituency running. Money to run the constituency. They give you, and it is well, you know, broken down. Uh, broken down. They give you town running. When I'm in town here, I've come here on radio show and as an LP, the shopping mall. You, you know, I can have a cup of coffee and we talk about national issues. I'm facilitated to do that. Then I'm given subsistence. Okay? Calculated that when I'm out of my constituency, I'm in Kampala, possibly I stay in a hotel. They calculate a three star hotel. Okay. Fairway, that is the standard price. It's how much does it charge per day? And then they give you that as your subsistence. Now, marriage is, is basically to facilitate you every month to be in touch with your constituency on any issue. Yes. Okay? So, 
This beer is like any other normal beer. Of Parliament, we have had oil, we have, now we have the mighty one, we are as the mighty one, public order management bill before Parliament. I think it's the one we are going for tomorrow. Okay? So what makes this exceptional? That you want to give MPs 5 million out of the normal. It's an aberrant kind of arrangement. You think it's an aberration? It's an aberration. Well, but you need money out of No, 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 no. no. I've said, I'm facilitated. Edelman, you are paid to yes. come here and facilitate this program. Yes. Okay? Every single day. Why do you say now, given this one that Mwanga is coming, I need a special package? Well, but you say you give it an answer. No, no, no. no. No, 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 we consult every day and we are facilitated to do so. Now, that's the history of this money. So where do you pick it from? And, and my, my point of contention is that, one, as you've said that in, in your intro, is that this parliament has been giving a hope to this country that may be out there amidst all bad things that are going on, there is a real hope. Okay? Among these young... By the way, it is the youngest parliament in the history of this country. 43 years average age. 43 years average age. Okay? Without... You see, you now have me and, and you who don't even carry the baggage of history. We are not bogged down by our name, by your birthday, by blah, blah. We were born long after independence. We were born after independence. We are the ones who are saying, Christ, let us define our challenge. As they say, every generation has its own historical challenges. It either fulfills it or betrays it. Now, the Jubilee generation, let me say, because ours is actually, let me use that word. Okay? Ours is the Jubilee generation. We have reached a level. We have been telling our fathers, by the way, the leadership of this country, on average, I went to school with him once. Yes. Oh, really? Yes, with the same years. I went to school, but you like sat a senior six at the same year. All right. You know, for the president of this country, my own accounts. He's talking to his children. I am supposed to be a son. Okay? We are telling and calling them to order. Okay? That this is the way we want this country to be run. This is the future that this country deserves, and it deserves better. Now, it has been this parliament, not any other institution, that a lot of people had hope and promise. Now, what the executive is trying to do is to, to depict like, look, these are not like any different other group. Okay? We have a history of 5 million that led to the change of term limits. They needed for air time to consult. To them, they also air time to consult. So, for me, this is meant to demean parliament and take away that invisibility. So that's why it is very, very, very important. No matter how many people will do so, we've got to make a stand. We've got to make a stand. We've got to make a stand and be clear heart. And we have pressures. The other day I was telling people who have been pressurizing that you bring money for, 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 a, for a cause and you take it for, but you are using the constituents. I said, now, if the madam here is a mother, if she goes on the street as a prostitute and brings back money home to feed children, the moral imperative there. She has, she's fulfilling a legitimate cause. Using <coughs> illegitimate methods. Using illegitimate cause. So the, you cannot put a marker on this and find it a place to run uh, the moral page. Two wrongs don't make a right, basically. Two wrongs don't make a right. And we believe, we urge colleagues, there's been a debate. We have not had a very radical, I've had one radical stand that I will not take the money. You don't take the money. But yes. you find it on your bank account. It's already there. It was put there on a friend. But I've given other because you are not alone. You work in a group. I belong to a party. I belong to an opposition group. We are meeting tomorrow. And to debate on two things. Yes. One, whether we return the money to the giver as it is. Yes. Okay? Or we donate this money to, to, a, worthy cause. to a worthy cause. In other words, you would have taken the money. Ah, exactly. In which case, you carry a moral stigma that you've taken the money. Even though stamped on the giver. Yes, you've taken the money. Therefore, increasingly when you interrogate this issue, there remains to be only one 
right course is to return the money. The argument has been that the money will be stolen if you take it back. Mm. Okay, fine. But this is a demonstration. This is a stand to say, come on, we are members of parliament. You throw it at them, basically. Basically, Mr. President, don't take us that far. We will not walk that lane. Well, will they will you stop doing it in case you do that? Take that. There will not be impact. No, it's, it's, it's small things matter. All great achievement starts with one bold stand. The Chinese say a, a distance of a thousand, a thousand miles of starts with one step. step. And never undermine the action of a few people who are determined who are determined to see to a given end. And that's where I come from. Actually, let me tell you, numbers here don't matter. I won't hold anybody who does not return money. But the few who are willing. That's strong enough. Okay. Last there's Rosa Parks incident in the bus in the US way back in the 50s that led to the mass passion of women and black people as well. Talk to us about your own views, Richard. Would you return this money if you are in the August house? Um, Five million shillings. Edmund, before I talk about the money, I want to raise um, fundamental issues here. One was Parliament the right institution to go out and consult once again. Two, the mode and method they used for consultation was it the right method. Three, the quality of consultation and the outcome, including the output, is it something that is consumable? And will it inform the bill anyway? Um, it's quite unfortunate in this country that we are abusing the institutions that we've put in place. Um, for example, on the issue of this bill, I know probably people have not agreed, including members of parliament, the media, civil society, and the community, which is okay. We are not homogeneous. Not, not women, women are not homogeneous, men are not homogeneous. So disagreement is okay. My only challenge is how the consultations were done and the timing. We have an institution that was put in place by, a cons by the constitution of this country, the Uganda Law Reform Constitution. Its mandate is to introduce laws, to reform laws. They have done consultation. I don't know whether within the movement caucus they even reflected on the achievements and the challenges that the Law Reform Commission faced in the consultation and coming up with that draft. And if so, what needed to be done? Was it the best? thing to do to send members of parliament out there or there were other methods that could have been used. Sending 300 and I don't know what, 76. 76 members of parliament, some of them were standing on platforms in markets and some of them were telling us in a day they had 5, 10 rallies, honestly on a bill that affects the lives of the people, individual lives here we're talking about. When you talk about the oil bill, the public order management bill, many people look at it as, some, as if it's something that's very detailed touched from them. But this particular bill, everybody mirrored themselves in that bill. And therefore there was need for due diligence to be taken in the mode of consultation. And for me, I don't know whether we are going to have access to the reports these members of parliament are producing. I really want to doubt the quality. Yeah, it's totally poorly managed. On the money, you know this morning as I was driving, I had somebody say, if you're not taking the money, bring it back, we'll use it. Do you know the mentality Ugandans have now? What is it? If they, if they are eating the money, why not us? So actually the Ugandans are asking Honorable Chivumbi here, please bring the money to the constituency. If you take it back, those guys are going to start building mansions. So the mentality is, let's grab as much as possible as well, because they know there are some people who are actually eating more than they, the ordinary persons can get. Now the members of parliament, they are called honorable members of parliament. Yes. You wonder why that word honorable is there. What do you if, it's, if it's not just for you the people. Right I don't know. If they are really honorable, they should return that money. There is no value for money. First and foremost, there is no value for money. If you watch these members of parliament in the constituency doing the so-called consultation, there is no value for money. Two, Honorable Chivumbi has said it clearly here. These people are facilitated. Their role is to legislate, to give oversight. That is the work they are paid for. So no more run of the money. No, no more run of it. Three, why the marriage and divorce bill? There are two things that are going to come out of this facilitation. One, and I'm told this even 
evening, the meeting is winding up. Either that bill is going to be passed the way uh, the term limits were removed, or the bill is going to be thrown out. Some people think it's already been thrown out by the caucus. Th those are the two scenarios I'm looking at. And basically because of the facilitation. Uh, the movement, the members of parliament are over 270. So when they come tomorrow to the House, Honorable Chibundu and his minority, whether they like it or not, if they have agreed to pass that bill, they're going to pass it. If they want to throw it out, they will throw it out because they've already taken the money. Can you I have put, you have already sacrificed. Small information. Yes. I, 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 I doubt the intention of the meeting in interview. Yes. Because the Speaker's Parliament has already made a ruling. It's been really effective. Sent away for three months. For three months. It will not suffice. Maybe you're talking about the weather. No, I can the... I can also tell you that the meeting in, in Italy is about public order management bill. Not necessarily what they said they were going to talk about. Because behind the published around mm -hmm. the marriage and divorce bill, yeah, at the hand, mm -hmm. they are trying to smuggle the public order management. And I can tell you it's a horrible bill. <laughs> Uganda is effectively going to make Uganda a police state. Let me talk about that on another day. You can't meet yeah. three people, whether it's raining or not, under a tree. Mm -hmm. You can't meet three unless you have the expectation of police, mm -hmm. whether it's in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about this. And you say that Uganda Law Reform Commission mm -hmm. is the best agency to consult. Mm -hmm. But those are not political people. When does politics get into these technical matters? There are institutions that were put in place for a reason, just like Parliament was. These are commissions that were put in place to do their work, which includes reforming the laws in this country. So, oh, in all this, by the way, the bill has been in the media for the last five or six weeks now. I have not heard anything from the Uganda Law Reform Commission. Either they're in total shock, or they just don't know what to do. They really can't comprehend. What do you mean no, total shock? What do they normally do? Some people might not know. Because they should have come out. First of all, they should have come out. This bill has gone through a due process, Edmund. A due process. Like it, uh, the politicians will deny, whoever will deny that this bill, if they're religious, it has gone through a due process. And I do not think there is any bill in this country that has been subjected to this level of scrutiny. So, for anybody to think that this bill has not gone through due process is not right. Now, for me, my challenge with the movement caucus, it's okay for them to review the bill and internalize it, but they should have given respect to the institutions that were put in place. First of all, call the Royal Reform Commission. How did you come about this proposal? Who did you consult? Yeah, but they've already ruled. They've done their thing. They've given you the book. Who? I'll take it back to them again. They've given you their view already. But why are there as an institution if you have a challenge? They've with given you something and you're not happy with it. You could hire a consultant. He gives you a job. You don't just follow it. No, but then what are you doing with the institutions? You then remove them from the constitution. Well, like they've done good work. No, Edmund, I think, as Honorable Chivumbi said, we are a new generation and we want institutions to work in this country. They can't be perfect. They, they can't be perfect, but we can improve on them. There's nobody who's perfect. There's no institution who, who is perfect. And there is nothing that starts from zero. Everybody is building on what somebody else started, well, including Mark, government. This is Spectrum on Radio tonight. Should MPs return money given for the marriage and divorce bill consultations? Our guests tonight, Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi, Tambala County MP from the Democratic Party, and Ms. Rita Achiro, Executive Director of WODAC, that's the Uganda Women's Network. We expect other guests to join us later, give us another side of this story. You will be able to give us your own perspective later and read out the numbers through which you can call us tonight. Honorable Chibumbi, what happens when this money is returned to the Accountant General, whatever the title is, at Parliament? Uh, first of all, there is also all money is taxed, even I am all money is taxed. But this one was not taxed at all. Oh, you got it in a block? In a block, 5M. How did you know? You, oh, you didn't have any money? No, 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 no. Today's banking, you have an instant alert. Mm -hmm. Whatever transaction happens on my account, even when I'm here, mm -hmm. I'll instantly get to know. So you got 5 million total sum? It's total sum. Mm -hmm. um, uh, by then, even you're supposed to know you are neat balance mm -hmm. at all time. <laughs> it will be really mm -hmm. a good money. <laughs> You want to know how much money I have in any bank? Mm -hmm. right. um, 
I, I think let us get to the issue. The, the, the principle right. Okay? This is a moral principle. It's actually a demonstration. A moral stand. I don't care whether I return to the manner and it is stolen. The oh. thing is I'm opposed to you are not supposed to do this. Really? Yes. I don't care what else you use the money for. The thing is... That's a headline stuff. Yes. The thing is, Mr. President... Your conscience will be clear. As an this is not the way to go. Mm. It's not right. It's not prudent. And I'm not party to it. That's a headline stuff. It's not a headline stuff. It's a principled stand. Because others have been bringing in these issues that money will be stolen, blah, blah, blah. You, you, you know? So you have to justify. Because if I take the money... Use it well. Now, if I take the money, that there are legitimate needs I can use this money for in my constituency. Okay? Yes. But the other, this morning I was telling a colleague who is pro the idea of, of donating it to a right cause. I said, if Madame here steals money and pays for his son to go to Harvard to do medicine, he comes back to Uganda to treat sick people. It's the wrong thing. It's poison or not. Okay, but do you look at the cause? She has stolen money to pay school fees to his son. The doctor to comes to treat school people. The doctor comes to treat people. So you think the and, and, where do, and where do we come? Uh, where do we come? How do we come up as a country? She has touched that. You know there is something horrible going on in this country. A perception that all Ugandans are potentially thieves. Yes. Actually, it's a propaganda. The defense of corrupt people in Uganda is normally now serious. They will tell you corruption is historical. That long, long time ago, even days of Adam, they bring a biblical and chronic yes. whatever to justify. They will tell you corruption is universal. Yes, that's why you go. Uh -huh. Then they will tell you the only reason why you are complaining about corruption is that you've not had an opportunity, an opportunity. to steal. But potentially, so they say, we'll give you a chance to steal. Yeah, yeah, you'll give you a chance to steal. And, 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 and you will steal. All right. Therefore, what we are trying to do, and the principal stand we are trying to, to tell that, come on, much as you may have that perception, they have. Me, I come from a constituency. You, you know me a little better. Yes. I ran an election and I had no money. Walking on foot. Walking on foot. That's remarkable. Okay. The, the, the president, the government. Let's talk about when you when you come. No, no, no. We're not really here. That let us take a break. This is Petra. We'll be back. Just stay tuned. Communications Commission invites entries for the third ASIA Awards scheduled for June the 7th, 2013. Visit www.ucc.co.ug slash awards for information on the categories and criteria. Deadline for entries is April the 30th, 2013. ASIA, ICT Innovation for National Development. Everywhere you go. So I'm chilling at home with my crew. The boys are waiting to watch the game on the telly, but the chicks want to go to the beach. So how do we play it? I glance across the room. Eye contact is made. A plan is hatched. People get some sand. Lots of it. Jeff will take care of the deco. Tim the entertainment. And I the clubs. And so we bring the beach to the apartment. If you can't go to the beach, we bring the beach to us. It's just how we do. It's not about where you're at. It's the difference you bring. Get a fresh take on things. 
Club is brewed longer for easier drinking. Brewed slower for great taste. Club, tastefully different. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. Should MPs return money given for the marriage and divorce bill consultations? Our guests tonight, Honorable Mwanga Chibumbi, Tambala County MP from the Democratic Party, one of the freshest faces in that August House. Ms. Richard Chir, Executive Director of the Uganda Women's Network Award. Now, you will be able to call in as well and contribute to this discussion uh, this evening. Now, earlier Spectrum spoke to several MPs who insisted that they will keep the money or use it on projects to benefit their people directly. These are Ngora District Woman MP Jacqueline and among in and Tungamo district woman MP Naomi Kabasharira, Butambala district woman MP Mariam Narurega, and Buyaga East MP Ignatius Bessesira. Let's hear the voices right now. I've spent more than that five million they're giving us in consultation. I went parish by parish consulting my people about this marriage bill. I never requested for that money. But now that this man has come, when I've already finished my activity, I'm not going to return it because it will be stolen by those thieves, the condos we have in this country. And it will be used for their personal benefits. I'll rather take it to my women and they empower themselves economically. I'm going to buy those seedlings. It is a planting season. I have a women's day on Friday. And all my women who come, I'm going to make sure they go with a whole seedlings, beans, and maize. I will have empowered my community than giving this money to someone who's going to buy land somewhere and build a bungalow for personal use. I actually was one of the people who complained because I've been up country and people are saying you were given money and I was not seeing it. We have terms facilitated to do other work if it is likely beyond what you are expected to do. Have we been going back to consult on a particular bill, a special assignment? If it's facilitated, I would have no problem. In any case, I've not stolen it and I didn't ask for it, but did the activity. So I don't see any reason why I should take back that money. That is actually government money. And I don't think that government money can ever come in the wrong channel. No. It's five million. For heaven's sake, we are supposed to be consulting for over three months. Personally, I will spend more than five million. So I don't see any reason of taking back that money. There is no way you are going to just talk and move away. I am very comfortable with that money. I will not take it back. It was meant for consultation. They paid it late. Haven't we been paid late when we are going to do something and you borrow money and use and then you repress? So what's the big deal? Actually, you people you are spoiling everything. What is five million? This is a peanut compared to what we do. How do you know how much I've spent when I was in Tunga? I've just been in Tunga, my other function. It's a lot of money that I spent. And then when you talk of this five million, it's a spinat. But it is just the way you portray it. It is the perception that you put in people. What is five million? How much money do these civil servants use? Why don't you look at that before you follow what MPs use? <laughs> Peanuts, five million hundred pay judges. Somebody said that really, really is peanuts eaten by monkeys and humans alike. Honorable Mwanga Chivombi, these are legitimate reasons. These people have spent their money. They've spent more than that, and some of them think it's really nothing. But, uh, uh, but as I said at the beginning, they are paid to do that. No, but no, no, I've told you, they have no water to they, they are paid, and things. not every day. Let me be very honest here. Not every day that we go to the constituency to consult. So somehow, it is cumulative. So once you have this noble duty, and every day you have not been going to do that, find it within your own means to consult. Um, the other concerns of my MP that you see money will be stolen, I've already uh, explained it. Somebody called them condos. That I said what that was during a means. Yes, that, that at the end of the day, this is a moral question. Okay, where do you stand? Okay, we can just find these other things and say, you know, for, for even say, blah, 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 blah. If MPs have issues of financial, because the legitimate thing is you read an observer story yes. some time back. Yes. A group of MPs, as far institutions have gone, that went to meet the president. And ask for financial healing. And ask for financial he healing. But it is imperative, one of the measurements. The 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 what I'm saying to it is also important for a leader to be able to manage your personal finances. If you can't manage your day finances, then, then, have, then can you be a leader? Secondly, but before they went to now, 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 now they have just speaking about the five million. Do you know what is in offering? What is that? Government is already presenting a, a supplementary. 
much? Yes. To Parliament. How much? Okay. One, prepare for money at 4 p.m. The office of the Prime Minister. Office of the Prime Minister, money stolen. And office of the President. State House, 129 billion. Exactly. Now, it is like underhand. I've paid you up front. Please, I've paid you 5 million. I'm bringing a supplementary budget. Please pass it without you. Treat me nicely. Treat me nicely. <laughs> And, and for me, I think it's a bribe. Absolutely, it's a bribe. That's a strong statement. I'm saying it's a bribe. The members of parliament can go wherever they want to go. They will never walk away from this. Two, let us not. I've told you as, as we were going for a break, I told you, I won an election. Talk to us about that election. In without spending a single coin to bribe any single vote. How did you do it? Magic or bonus? A government machinery led by the president and the first lady. With two billion. Oh, they have two billion. Two billion. How much did you have yourself? Your village must have been rich. How much did you have yourself? No, no, no. I, I can tell you. I spent all the money on a public address system and fuel. And posters. Nothing. Nothing. Not a, I didn't have you didn't even buy sugar? No, not, not a single kilo. Not a single voter asked me for money. For 1,000, 2,000. You only listen to my issues. Maybe you still have a voice. I'm, 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 I'm born of one thing. They even knew my history. I said, this is one who trust you can do this. Okay? They've had me on radios, cutters, and what I've been doing. They know your father as well. They, they didn't know my father is a driver and uh, he died sometime. So I didn't even come from a prominent family. Therefore, the, what I want you to attest to, that the moral fabric of this country is still strong. The majority of you guys... Oh, say that again. Yes. The majority... Not everyone is a thief. So yes. The majority, majority of Ugandans are still good Christians, good Muslims. And they don't in any way condone corruption. This kind of populistic thing that tell me that people are asking us for money, blah, 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 it is about to eat the money, the MPs. And I want to put it on record. Go and put a calculator. Those who are saying they are taking money to the constituencies, how much they will take? Some people have told us they spent much. No, no, no. The, 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 no, no, no. The judge. No, no, no. The other day I was in a radio station. Asked Edmond and you and me. Okay? Who, who of us can live on 250,000 per month? It's not possible. Okay? For many. But a good teacher in this country is paid less than that. 260,000. 260,000 per month. And you and me, everyone in this room says, I can't live on that money. And somebody in MP says, say, that is peanuts. The Supreme Court judge is paid that much. He has also complained. No, that I'm saying, you are calling it peanuts in this country. The Supreme Court judge is paid that much. So, therefore, members of parliament, they should better wake up to reality. Yes, and I'm going to live within 20 minutes. Yes, 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 therefore, and, and I've been calling on members of parliament. If the if parliament is a front for change, well, we must ensure that the, the actually the front is pure. It's solid. You, two, I must question you. Mandela said you cannot harvest evil. What do you mean? Okay? You can't harvest, harvest evil. Explain that. Exactly. If, if people are saying this man is not upright, but they are going to use it for a legitimate cause, yeah, it's, like, it it's like saying you can harvest evil. I can go... You sow evil, you harvest evil. That's, that's the natural rule of how they have. No, 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 no. So, harvest. so, so you have to be clean so from the very beginning. Man, I think listening to the voices of our honorable members of parliament, yes. I ask myself, do these people actually manage their finances as well, first as individuals? Because I had one of them say, uh, this is government money and therefore we'll use it. Government has a budget. Individually, we all have budgets. It does not mean when money is on the table, it's to be used. It depends what that money is for. So these people just see money to be spent regardless of what the cause is. And that's very unfortunate for a member of parliament. The other is they're opportunists. Do you think so? They are. A member of parliament saying she's having Women's Day next week. Women's Day was in March. And I'm sure she had planned for Women's Day. So she was waiting for this money to go and buy holes and seeds and 
all that. I think the opportunities they are taking but Uganda, the divorce bill they are taking Ugandans for granted. Ugandans were up in arms when they were consulting on the marriage and divorce, but these guys went with their own agenda. What agenda? Their own agenda. Some of them want to be returned in 2016. The Ugandans must look beneath what these M MPs are presenting. They do not go to consult. They are you, why are you buying seeds with a five million shillings? What's wrong with it, that? it wasn't meant for that. Maybe you want to plant. No, that is that is being opportunist. The other is really, you know, at times when I hear people speak, that is government money. Where is the country Uganda at, in our hearts? Where is it? They have look at Uganda as some state detached from them, and they do not connect with Uganda. There is no connectivity. Fact, they they not, do not. The first word is not to say government money. Yes. They should say taxpayers Spare money. Yes. So they are so detached from Uganda, and they think they live in isolation. They live in an island. You call five million shillings just? He said it's peanuts. He goes to Mulago. Maybe when he goes to the bar, he goes by the time he comes out, he has district. nothing left. The nurse who treats his auntie, his relative, does not even earn 300,000 shillings a month. On average, she can't earn that 5 million shillings an entire year. No, but standards differ. Maybe this MP, he goes one evening in there, but when he comes out, he has nothing. It's peanuts for him. It's peanuts for him? I don't think we need those guys. He comes out of the back rolling and he has they nothing. need to get back that money to him. <laughs> the ladies of the night take it out. And, and Edmund, finally, oh, before we, 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 we go for another break, when you look at 5 million shillings, Honorable Kivumbi here is saying, you know, he's going to return 5 million. You know, 5 million sounds small little, you know, pieces of money put there. This amounts to 1.9 billion Uganda shillings. Yes. 1.9 billion Uganda shillings put together. Yes. If you took just four districts and say we are going to build schools in these four districts. What can you do? Buy a road unit or what? It will do marvelous things. It will, I don't know what it will do in Mulago Hospital. I don't know what it will do in this city, city that we love so much. 1.9. So when we look at the 5 million for Honorable Chibumbi, I don't know. It looks One small. 9 billion. It's 1.9 billion shillings. That's not small money. That is taxpayers' money. Money that we pay every day. That, it, it, it comes from our own sweat. But this is a special consultation. This is not a What is so animal. special? What is so special? Marriage and divorce bill, you did hear the, feel the hit. They just went for what we used to call it. Yeah, 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 you know, you know, they may defend parliament. First of all, members of parliament, as you say, are honorable men. Honorable members of parliament. Yeah, one, honorable men and women. One, you remember as you said that the bill had run the whole course. Mm -hmm. Actually, we were at the final stage of passing this bill mm -hmm. at a committee of the whole house. And we passed some clauses already, by the way. Okay? Yeah. We had reached uh, around, I think, close 20 something. Mm -hmm. The rest of that close until we hit a snag. Okay? And then they said, okay, let us go back and consult. It's unusual for a, a bill to reach a committee of the whole house and you send members of parliament. Because even when they come back, you not have a general debate. Because the general debate it's is finished. You have the final person on the counter that sits with an amendment. So it was something it is so abnormal to send parliament for consultation at that level. Because that level, I can tell you, is normally technical. Purely technical. The, the technocrats in parliament. The, the, the technocrats. No, no, no. Work is simplified by the technocrats for members of parliament. Mm -hmm. So even uh, an ordinary without being a lawyer, you can understand the issues mm -hmm. and you can move an amendment. These are normal things. This is not rocket science. Yeah, and we don't expect you to know anything. That's why you have the first legal parliamentary council. You, you have the to, to help us. So the bill had reached that level. Second, but when members were sent to the parliament, and I want to advise the women movement, me, I'm sympathetic. Ugandans. No, no, no. Ugandans in general. Me, I appreciate the issues in the bill. They are very fundamental. Okay? But I also appreciate that the environment right now is, is so bad that you cannot have a good law what under this mean? environment. What do, mean? What, what, what do you mean about that? No, no. As I said, a lot of misconception, whatever, where do they come from? The five million drove them nuts. Crazy. Oh. No, not even crazy. The major problem was not bad. Let me tell you. I can tell you, if you want me to, to go to the bottom of this problem, it is the media. Okay? 
you and your callers on these talk shows defined the issues before we even went for consultation. But they keep what you say. No, no, no. Right. So when, by the time we reached there, okay, the things had been colored and blurred, and you could not have really a very good kind of consultation. Let's hear from the listener. Let's hear what they say. You just accused them. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. You can call it now. Our number is 0414 When you call it, please tell us remember where you are calling from. Spectrum, hello? Hello. Hello. Well, that call does not seem to be coming through. Just did. Hello. Yes, my name. Jen, please switch off your radio and then talk to us. Go right on.
Donald Trump. Hello. Hello. Yes, your name? Francis. Good evening, Francis. says when it comes to money people have diversionary views personally i would take it and use it to develop my constituency but not for that funny bill Florence calls it a funny bill rashid matsiko who demands for the accountability of that money it is a pity that everybody who hopes everybody had hopes in this parliament but they went astray a long time ago the president was never right edna tush let the mps take the money it will end up being embezzled anyway sarah chove those mps are politicking because these are the same people who claim of not having money uh, to reach this, um, I'm reading what she wrote, these remote villages, because there are people on the bills. Honorable Mwanga Chibu, go and buy salt for your poor. Someone said poor because you, but told us you are not poor. Go on. Yeah, but yes, uh, this is the Uganda, you can sample it on this program. And doesn't get far away from that. But we are leaders. Amidst all the darkness, we have a moral duty to shed some light and in the right direction. For me, it's not even about popularity. For this issue, I can tell you, even if majority of my constituents said, bring the money, I will not do it. Because tomorrow I will not be a member of parliament. And you can't sustain that. Can't I can't sustain it. With five million shillings, how much more will you take? How much more will I take? So at the end of the day, that's not sustainable. And my humble request to, to, to the country and to viewers, yes, roads are bad. There are no teachers are being paid poor. Actually, the big story is, if going by the press, is that salaries of teachers will be great. For three months, they have to be patient. They have to be patient. But here you are. Let's be sensitive. One day, I mean, this man says five million can pay. Yes, one day. Because today, the, mod, the role of the modern state has changed. From pure protecting people, property, and right, to trying to understand the people. And to understand to the, the people is what do people feel when they go to bed? What are their worries? What are their aspirations? Now, yes, those are legitimate concerns. You can buy salt, sugar, blah, blah, with the money. The big question is for all Ugandans is that sustainable? And is the role of an MP to buy salt and sugar? Three, is a digital diversion. If I'm paid money to go and buy salt and I bring water, that's corruption. That's corruption. <laughs> if, you the budget yes, if you know the parliament is paid money for consultation, you know, if you're paid money for consultation and I take their mattresses, 
I'm short changing people. And let me tell you, the gift of this money has got what he wants already. To discredit parliament, to discredit the institution of parliament, to make whatever I speak, they will say, that guy is worth only five million. Really, that is the aim of the give of this money. To taint your hands. To taint our hands and say, because let me tell you, what is in the offing in Parliament? OPM is coming. Okay? Yes. We are going for a debate on term limits. Forget about the marriage bill. Yes. We are going to go for electoral reforms. You are still stuck with the electoral commission. Okay? The public order management bill. The public order management bill. I need to store this. Somebody wants to write a picture to of five million. Rita, before we go, talk to us. Somebody mentioned highness. Do we have highness in this city? You know, um, Edmund, many people look at things from a face value. The purpose of giving these MPs the five million shillings, one, was to support their immediate needs, to go out there, in, you know, saying they're going to their constituencies. That was one. The other, which I think government has succeeded on. The immediate bill was to consult. No, what they have succeeded on is to use the five million shillings to make the bill unpopular, just like the, the lifting of that, uh, the term limits. So that consultation and now giving out the five million shillings, which they are saying it's peanuts because they are rich people, has made <laughs> this bill even now. more unpopular <laughs> than ever before. All right. So the government has killed its own bill and we we'll wait for them to resurrect it. Thank you very much. Dear guests, Miss Rita Achir, executive director of the Uganda Women's Network. Thank you for coming to Spectrum. Right. Honorable Mwanga Chibumbu, Mutambala County, and coming from the Democratic Party. Thank you for calling in and thank you for tuning in as well. I've been your host, Ed Montes. Spectrum will be back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English.